So first, I just need to do a roll call attendance for the purpose of the open meeting law. So we can use Zoom. Denise barstow mans Present. Courtney Meyer. Present. Judy Stone. Present. And I, Diana West, am present. And then we have two guests here right now, Irene Costello and Brianna Quinn. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> All right, our first order of business is to approve the minutes from June 20th, 2023. Were there any corrections or additions that need to be made? Motion okay. to approve is written. Thank you, Denise. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Judy. So now we have to do a roll call vote. Denise Barstow Mans. Aye. Courtney Meyer. Aye. Judy Stone. Aye. And I, Diana West, also vote yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Okay, now we're going to welcome our potential members. So I was a little bit misinformed. I thought the select board had already appointed people. That's not true. Uh, at the September 6th meeting, they will review all of the applications and appoint people at that time. So Irene and Brianna have both expressed interest. And then we also had two other people, Emma Dragon, who goes by Dragon in professional settings, and uh, Mary Carney is also interested. So um, Irene, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I moved to Hadley from Boston or the Boston area about 18 months ago. And I have a um, woman-owned um, wholesale baking company called Effie's Homemade. And we make a line of tea biscuits. You might have seen the brand um, with the, uh, our flagship product is the oat cake. And we actually have quite a nice following in the Pioneer Valley. We're in um, Whole Foods in Hadley, uh, River Valley Co-op, Atkins Farms, um, Atlas, um, and a few oh, provisions and a few others in the area. So um, you may have seen the boxes. And I, how long, do you want me to focus on anything in particular? <laughs> uh, what's your interest in history and how yeah. history? Well, I was a history major in college. And I, um, being in the food world, I also have a degree in um, food studies. And the history of food was the, you know, the major, the, the core um, the sort of curriculum there. And I love history. And you can't believe my awe when I landed on the West Street Common, not knowing about the regicides, because I spent uh, eight years growing up in Connecticut outside New Haven. And there, the regicides were known as three judges. And so when I moved here and like less than two months after living here, I heard about the angel of Hadley and the regicide. I'm like, oh my gosh, my life has come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. So yeah. And um, my, you know, in my business, I'm, you know, I do a lot of project management. I do. Um, and in my past careers, um, I've been involved with um, my alumni association. I ran the Boston Club, alumni club, um, when I lived in Boston. And I've done a lot of volunteer work for my, my school. Wonderful. Thank you. Brianna, would you like to share some stuff about yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Brianna. You can call me Bree. Um, so we recently bought a house in Hadley after living in Los Angeles for quite a while. Um, I grew up actually in Amherst, but only lived there till I was 18 and then moved away. So it's been a long time since I've been back. And after we found out we were having our second child, we decided it's high time to get out of there and <laughs> move back this way because it's a much better area to raise kids. Um, and so we're very happy to be here. It's been really, really nice. And we really want to get involved in the town and what's going on here. And um, I felt like the historical commission was a good place for me to start because I also have a background in um, art history. I went to mass art in Boston and studied art history at length and um, history of architecture. And then I went on to work in the entertainment industry in LA at length. So um, 
I have a lot of interest in things like photography, graphic design, videography, all of things that I know you guys are currently kind of working towards in your group. Um, so I felt like those roles could be beneficial potentially for the commission. Um, and I just have a really vested interest in the community that we are now in. We want to plant roots. We want um, to know more about what's going on for our kids and just kind of settle down here. So I thought that getting involved in what's going on in the town was a great place to start. Um, and this seems like a kind of niche area that I fit in, whereas like I don't really know what's going on with um, the overall like financial status of the town or where the money is best allocated. And so starting somewhere that I knew that I could be of help seemed like a good spot to be. So thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Welcome. Does anybody have any questions for Irene or Bree? Okay, so feel free to stay for the whole meeting. If you have to go, no worries. Um, I think we will be under the hour that we have allocated. Um, so I'm ready to move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the V1 Vodka slash St. John's Church CK application. So Paul, who owns V1 Vodka, was not able to join us tonight, um, but he submitted an application for $200,000 in CPA funds to help repair the steeple roof and some plaster work on um, the building he now owns and operates, which is formerly known as the St. John's Church, located next to the Goodwin Memorial Building. Uh, the building is part of the Hadley Center Historic District, which is on the National Register of Historic Places. Denise, did you have anything you wanted to share from last night's CPA meeting? Yeah. Um, do we know why Paul isn't coming? Is it possible that he is thinking about like withdrawing his application and doing it? No, I, so this is partly on me, I think. So when he first reached out to me about a month ago, I mentioned tonight's meeting and um, then there had been some emails and he hadn't followed up with me on my last email that I had sent him but um I knew he had submitted the application since Mary there had forwarded it to me and then I forwarded it to the rest of the committee for you guys to look at um and so then I just reminded him today that the meeting was tonight and here's the zoom link and he told me he was traveling and would not be able to attend okay. so I have not heard that he um retracted his yep okay application. that's fine I don't want to like put yeah um all right so Paul is applying for the St. John's church. Um, that's now a private business. He wants to do work to the steeple, the roof, um, some exterior stuff like the doors and the walkways, uh, the windows, and then some plaster work inside the building. Um, I think the total was like $262 or $262,000. Um, <laughs> and he was applying for 200,000. So it's like around 80%. Um, and it's a, it's a big, it's a very different ask for the CPA because it's a private business. And the CPA has um, awarded money to, um, or like brought to town meeting um, stuff for like church, uh, the first congregational church in North Hadley, the first congregational church in Hadley. Um, the historical society. So all of those are not town entities, but they are nonprofits that operate in the town and they operate in historic buildings. So Paul's operating in a historic building, but the difference here is that he has a private business. So yeah, it's, it's just a, it'll definitely set a new precedent. It's um, an interesting project. Um, the church is in the reg national register um, because that, area is a historic district which is the national register um and the cpa money has to fund things that are for a public good so i think that we would qualify that as maintaining the historic landscape of that of our center of town um i do think that i can say that the majority of 
folks in the meeting last night were feeling like the um, interior work wouldn't be appropriate for CPA funding because it's really the exterior that we'd be interested in um, funding. And um, other towns have required things like having an historic preservation restriction on the building. I also think that we should mandate that there's a historic preservation restriction on the building because um, it doesn't stop anyone from coming and tearing it down <laughs> later, even after providing like taxpayer money to fix up the outside of this building. Um, and there's other towns that have done something where like there's an agreement between the owner and the town that they have to pay back that amount of money if it's sold. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said he was open to that idea within a certain amount of time. I think um, probably we would need to like actually come to him with a legit agreement and something that's been thought through through town council. Um, yeah. So that's the background. Okay. Did he by any chance break down what the cost of the interior work would be versus the cost of the exterior? Like, is that interior work the, the extra sixty two thousand he's not asking for, or did he not have it specifically broken down that way? Um, he did not have it broken down that way because he was, okay. yeah. But I can, um, I do have that information. So if you give me just a second, may I ask a question? <clears throat> no, but this isn't a dumb question. But what what does CPA stand for? Yeah, I should have Preservation there. Act. The what? Community, Community Preservation, Preservation Act. Okay. So, okay. Denise, correct me if I say something wrong. So, it's a it's a state law that a town or a city can decide to have that you, as a town or city, vote to have access to community preservation funds, and that means you um, get money from the state, but then you also raise money through taxes. And then in our town, the money can be funded for open space, historic preservation, and um, what's the third one? Housing, I think. Certain housing projects. Affordable housing, historical, and conservation slash recreation. And so we have a CPA committee, which Denise serves on as our historical commission representative. And there's representatives from other town boards and commissions, as well as an at-large member. And so there are two rounds of applications each year because ultimately they have to go to the full town meeting floor. So when town meeting happens in, in May and October, that's when they be brought forth to the full town meeting floor. And then I believe it has to pass by a two thirds vote in the end. So we go through this process of people apply and then the CPA committee has to approve the applications. And in terms of things that are historical, they have to come to us to determine that we have made the decision that the building is historically significant for whatever it is that they want to preserve. For example, the Historical Society last year got funding to preserve a set of samplers that they have in their collection. Am I wrong that um, that organization only started like around 2003? Wasn't that when the state kind of passed laws about the CPA? I think it's relatively new. Yeah, right? it's pretty new. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then also like, sorry, I wasn't, that was a great description, Diana. I was trying to add up what the interior would cost and it's 90, 91,000-ish. Um. Yeah, so the weird thing about CPA is that whatever the town approves is allowed, but there's a lot of um, like standards and precedents that have been set by other towns. Um, so this would be the first time that our town would be doing a project like this. So I feel like it is important that, that CPA either approves it to go to town meeting with the correct stipulations or doesn't approve it. But then right now we're putting on our historical commission hat only and considering should funding, should we support this project? So what you have suggested or thrown out the idea that we would support it if a pre historical preservation was put on the building. 
Preservation yeah. of restriction, excuse me. Yeah. Okay. With that is let's open for discussion. That process takes a while too, doesn't it? To put it does. And <laughs> and you have to pay lawyers. And I like part of me wonders if it's if he's gonna see if that's financially worth it. Um did he say what the alternative would be to us not receiving, not giving him the money? Yeah. So if he doesn't receive funding, he said he'd rather try to just like cobble together funding um, to put these projects together slowly but surely. Like obviously starting with the roof, and then when he can move on to the windows, and when he can, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or he would try to like sell it as is. Um, I think he approached the town and the town said that they didn't want to have another building to look after, which like, okay. Um, so he could sell it as is. He could sell it doing, you know, some easier updates and sell it that way. And there's nothing, even though it's in a national historic district, nothing that stops anyone from tearing down a building in that in the center of town Correct. Um, or making you know painting it whatever or doing whatever they want to do to it so yeah if we, like if the the good thing about the owner is that he is interested in owning it and maintaining it and he wants to keep it exactly the same way that it is right now he's not trying to like add any elements to it he's not trying to put on an addition literally trying to stabilize this building you he's gonna work with someone who actually knows how to restore historic windows which is like that's more expensive so mm -hmm. it is i think there's value in supporting him because he is trying to keep the building standing and i think that i, I prefer that option but I do think there should be a historic preservation restriction on it. So if we say we support the project, but with a historic preservation restriction on it, um, do you think that that will totally make it dead in the water for him? Or do you think he would actually go for that? Because it sounds to me like he wants to get these projects done, but the steeple isn't going to imminently fall off the building. Yeah. I mean, I think that if you're going to request CPA money, because that's taxpayer money, that there should be a preservation restriction on it. I think that's like not a huge ask on our part. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think just if I can ask a question, I think this is um, similar to what you and I had spoken about on the phone, right, Diana, about how there aren't um, many historic preservation bylaws in Hadley in terms of what can happen to historic homes or not. And that's something, I think you told me that you had tried to move that into place, was it last year or something? And um, the select board had had uh, maybe not been in favor because there were too many restrictions on the downtown area, is that what? So this is similar, yeah. So that we you're referring to is we had tried to start a committee to look into establishing a local historic district, which would have more preservation restrictions in place than the national historic district, which really is just a, a moniker and doesn't do a whole lot um, in terms of preservation and uh, saving historic buildings. So yes, at the time the select board disagreed with that idea, mainly because we were focused on Russell School and they didn't want Russell School to be included because that has been so up in the air. And yes, there was a little bit of misinformation that was shared about like how we would be super controlling about things like paint color. And um, a lot of fear mongering got brought up around the idea that it would be like an HOA, which is not the purpose of it at all. Um, so I, I liked Denise's idea of having the historic preservation restriction on St. John's Church if they're going to receive the CPA funding. Uh, I would really like to see that building preserved in the center of town. 
It's been there since 1902, so not as old as some of the other buildings, but I believe that's also the same time frame that the Goodwin building was built in. And um, while it is no longer operating as a Catholic church, I think it still does have a lot of significance for many people in town. And Denise, he does open the building up for public events, right? He holds. He does. Events yep. in there. Yeah. Yep. And he is. Yeah. He's a Hadley resident. He has public events. Um, he does a lot with that building with very minimal parking, which is also wicked cool. Yeah. All right. Well, if we are in favor, then I can write a letter in support saying that we support CPA funding for it if a pres historic preservation restriction is put yeah. on the building. And then I don't know about like any caveats about the interior work, like just leave that to the CPA to decide. I would leave that to the CPA because okay. I mean, you could make that argument that the building is open X amount of times a year to the public to see it. Right. So. Yeah. And I think like the real value is the like the skyline, the landscape, yeah. the yeah, the sense of place that the building continues to hold for our community. Okay. So should I make a motion? Yeah. To support Paul Kozub's um, CPA proposal. Um, with a preservation restriction. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, Denise Sparse Mans. Aye. Courtney Meyer. Aye. Judy Stone. Aye. And I, Diana West, also vote aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Um, Denise, when is your next meeting for CPA so I have an idea of when I need to get this letter done? It is Monday, September 18th at seven o'clock. Hey, next thing on the agenda is to talk about how we are coming along on our CPA application projects. So for those of you who might not know, last year or last spring, we applied for CPA funding to complete three projects we've been working on. One is to erect four signs with historical information in Hadley, uh, they'll be in English and in Spanish. The other is to update the West Street walking tour. And the third one is to create an audio driving tour. Mm. So signs update. So Adriana fell through on doing the Spanish translation, unfortunately. So I hired two other people to do that work and um, they did that work. And then I found out that I perhaps had the wrong final text that they translated. <laughs> so um, Courtney and I are working on fixing that and that should happen soon. Um, once we get the Spanish designs finalized, then we can fill out the application with the building commissioner. And then once they approve it, we can finally go to fabrication. So slowly but surely we will get there. Does anybody have any questions about the sign? West Street walking tour. So Courtney and I are very close to being done with our final draft of this. Uh, we included two excerpts, one from a Holly Hobie work and one from a, an, a Margaret Atwood poem. And we've concluded we should probably get permission to be able to publish those in our little pamphlet so we don't get in trouble down the road. So Courtney reached out to Holly Hobie's, um, is it Hobie or Hobby? Uh, Hobby. Hobby, excuse me, Holly Hobby's representatives. And I reached out to Margaret Atwood representatives. I had to actually mail something to Canada for that. They told me they would get back to me in a week. So knock on wood, I did that last week. Um, I know Courtney's had trouble trying to get a hold of somebody for Holly Hobby. Yeah, so I called and emailed and never heard back. Um, so I did send a letter, uh, which you recommended. So, and I think I sent it uh, the middle of last week. So we'll see. I mean, at the end of the day, we did our due, due diligence. 
Yeah. And we're not making money off of this project. Um, it's educational purposes only. So just wanting to cover our bases. Any Can questions ask, about? Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, where will the pamphlets be located once they're published for the walking tour? So there will be a copy that will be free online that you can download. And then if you want to purchase an actual pamphlet, they have been at the library. And Denise, do you have them at Barstow's? I sold out, but we would be happy to sell more for the store commission. Yeah, so previously they were at Barstow's and at the library, and we might be able to get other town businesses like perhaps the Sugar Shack to carry them. And the Historical Society typically has oh. them as well. So we received, like I said, CPA funds to print them, around a print run of a thousand copies. And so we will ask for a suggested donation of $5, which would just go back into our budget to help fund similar projects in the future. But otherwise it is available for free. Okay, the driving tour. So we finalized that script and Alex at Hadley Media has been given the green light to start recording. So he has an intern who is interested in doing a lot of the narration and then he has another staff person who will also be doing some of the narration. So I was in contact with him last week. So probably that'll be starting next couple of weeks. We'll hear more. And that's a female presenting person mainly and then a male presenting for the others? Correct. Okay. And what's the um, scope of the driving tour? So I don't remember the total length of it, but we have you start it down in Hockenham and then you drive up Route 47 into the center of town and then you head over to the Common mm -hmm. and then you head up 47 into North Hadley where it finishes sort of in that area where River Drive meets Mount Warner Road. Nice. And um, so if it's a driving tour, it's something like the, on an app? Um, that you yep. Can... So we're still trying to figure that out where we're going to host it. Um, looking for a free hosting site. We're hoping that it can be something you can download onto your device or if you have access to the internet than to be able to listen to it kind of like you would listen to Spotify on your phone and it would operate where it would just go to the next one or you can pause and restart it as you would like and we're also working on creating a preset Google Maps you can just start at the first one and then it'll just tell you where to go on the next one. Fun. So are you familiar with um, Autio, A-U-T-I-O? Yeah, we talked about that, Irene, at um, one of our past meetings per your recommendation. Oh. Yes, yeah, so it's on our list. Yep. Right. <laughs> but feel free to, you know. I love that app. I love it. <laughs> so it's uh, it's an app that, um, oh, what's his name? Kevin Cosner is involved in or maybe one of the investors. And it's basically, um, you know, you, you've got it downloaded. It's, dry, you know, you're driving around in your car. And it's engaged or turned on. And if you're going by something of, you know, interest in any kind of interest, um, a story will, will pop up and start recording it or you can accept it and it will start playing for you. So in Deerfield, um, there are a few stories up there. Um, there's a story about the... Um, um, history of basketball and volleyball in Holyoke and Springfield, vice versa. Um, and just a lot of, you know, historical significance um, um, stories that are available. And everywhere you go in the country, you know, you might be driving by some place and up pops, you know, a little known fact of the area that you're you're driving through. So it's 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 pretty cool out. Mm -hmm. Hey, we'll definitely research that because that could reach a much wider audience than we were mm -hmm. thinking yeah. about. And it's great that you're already doing this, you know, all the content. <laughs> That's the hardest part. Yeah. I'll have to figure out if there's any costs associated with it. I don't, I don't think remember so. that there is. It's it's oh. the, the subscription. So you you pay for the subscription. 
but I think it's free for people to upload information. Oh, yeah, that's what matters. I think it's free for people to upload information. Upload. Yeah, I think if I remember, the content is screened, so they're going to, you know, um, qualify the content. But um, other than that, it's I'm pretty sure it's free to upload. Great, thank you. All right, any other questions about those projects? All right, on to our old business, Russell School. So the RSC, Russell School Committee, was dissolved, as we know. And I think I heard that they're putting together a committee to work on the RFQ. Yeah, so um, so I went to the select board meeting last week um, because I saw that Russell School was on the agenda. Um, and the select board and um, town hall are creating an RFQ group. And they, they um, emphasize that it's a group and not a committee. Um, and they do not want any non-employees to be part of it. Um, it will consist of just town employees and board members. Um, so they suggested Jennifer Sanders James, Carolyn Brennan, Tom Quinlan, Gary Berg, and Amy Parsons. And Amy would be the select board liaison uh, since she was the select board liaison for the Russell School Committee. Um, and so I went up and asked a couple questions. Um, uh, one being I... I thought it would be helpful for a member of the formal R um, Russell School Committee to uh, re potentially review the RFQ before it's posted. Um, and they said no. Um, I had asked Carolyn Brennan that before, but I figured I'd ask the select board as well. Um, and then I also asked if any of these meetings will be open to the public, and they said no. So oh. we've been we've been cut out completely. So just to provide some clarification for those in the room who might not know, by making it um, town employees only, they can make it a closed door meeting. Because if it is an official town committee, even a subcommittee, then those are subject to open meeting laws. Meaning that it would have to be like this, where the agenda is posted ahead of time, people have access to the Zoom link, it's recorded to be posted later, or it's held in person in a public location that again the agenda is posted so people know that they can attend and um have the potential to make comments although of course the chairperson always reserves the right to not allow comments from non-committee members yep did they perhaps share a timeline on this courtney um they said that the rfq is almost ready to go but that's that's all I know at this point. So, so then would the group, would the purpose of the group be to review any applications that they get? That's my understanding, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll continue to keep an eye on um, select board meeting agendas um, and just continue to attend and ask how things are going. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. That's yep. a lot. <laughs> All right, any other questions about Russell School? I have a feeling it's a very long issue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you got that idea. <laughs> um, I can try to give you the Spark Notes version. So Russell School is the building that is across the street from the town hall and the first congregational church on the corner of Middle Street and Russell Street. And um, it was built in 1894 to be Hopkins Academy. Um, Hopkins was only in there about 15 years before they got a different building, which was actually a house next door that is no longer there. And then the school housed grades, a combination of grades five through eight over the years until 1996 when they built the current Hadley Elementary School. And at that time, it um, had a couple different other schools in there, the Pioneer Valley Performing Arts Charter School was in there for a number of years. And then I'm not sure of the full name, North Star Learning something or other, they're like a homeschool collective was in there. And then probably about not quite 10 years ago, um, the town did not renew the lease with North Star in the attempt to fix the building. And CPA funds were 
applied for and received to fix the roof. However, they never actually fixed the roof or used those funds. And um, at this point, the building sits there and does not have a purpose, mainly because it is not safe for use. There's a particularly bad leak in the roof. Um, it's also not accessible at all. And so for a number of years, the Historical Commission, as well as other people in town, have try been trying to get the town to do something about it in the hopes of preserving the building. The Russell School Committee was a subcommittee that the Select Board appointed last year to look into um, purposes for it further and uh, what we should do moving forward. They did a townwide survey that was pretty well um, received. We had quite a few responses, what I'm trying to say. And at that point, the town said that they wanted to preserve the building. And uh, the school committee put forth a CPA application to get $1.2 million to stabilize the building. However, the select board um, eliminated that from the town meeting warrant. And what was voted on was to do a further stabilization study. So when we talk about this RFQ, that is for hiring somebody to do a new stabilization study. There have been three done in the past. This would be the fourth one. And um, then we can only hope um, more can be done in the future, but that is where we sit now. That was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Can you tell I've, I've been part of this for <laughs> years? You know the history. <laughs> Sorry if I might have missed this in your um, description. Um, have they done the surveys yet that the funding was passed for? No, so that is what this RFQ is for, um, which I think stands for request for quote. It typically I'm familiar with an RFP, which would be request for proposal. Yeah. And um, so it sounds like they're finalizing the RFQ and then this group will, will review the applications that come in for it. Yes, and um, just a clarification, it's not just for stabilization. Actually, it's not for stabilization at all. They didn't even include that. They included uh, fixing it up, selling, selling it, leasing it, or demolishing it. So that's what the feasibility study will will estimate the cost for all of those things. Wow. Another question I asked about why is the stabilization not in there, and they couldn't give me an answer. So. Okay. <laughs> we can speculate on that, but perhaps okay. not in the recorded meeting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Preservation restrictions. Courtney, you had asked me to put this on the agenda. Yeah, because we were looking into it um, at one point, and then I think, I don't remember what happened. I think the Russell School Committee was created, and then we just kind of stopped. Um so I, re I had reached out to Michael Steinitz per uh, Denise's recommendation at, um, where is he? Uh, uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Um, and I'm just reading this email real quick. Um, yeah, so he include, he, he gave me some information, like here's some FAQs, um, here's, you know, how to, how to move forward with this sort of thing, and then nothing happened with it, so. Um, I'm wondering if it makes sense for us to first do or not, but I guess we can't really do anything until we know what the select board wants to do with it. Okay, so we had originally been thinking that we would do this for Russell School. Mm -hmm. I think in general, it'd just be good if we were a bit more versed on the topic since we are now going to go to Paul with you and Vodka about adding it to his building. Yep. Um, I wonder if the state ever does like a webinar about that. We can learn more. Um, or if that's a project we want to take on in the future, if there are other buildings in town we think could benefit from it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Amherst has really strong historic preservation bylaws. So that's always something that you guys could look into um, is what they do and their historic buildings. I know even um, residences that are historic homes have pretty strong restrictions on what they're able to do. So that could be a helpful resource right next door. Great, thank you. 
It has also been suggested to us that we come up with a demolition delay by law. I was looking back in our old minutes actually, and that was something that was brought back up, I think right before the pandemic hit by Massachusetts Historical Commission or possibly the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And they recommended that to us as well when we had been speaking with the people at our last meeting about the building on the street. So okay. what, what can we do at this point? Like, I imagine we would have to run all this by the select board before we do anything. Like we can't just write up a demolition delay bylaw and see what happens. Well, there is a bylaws committee, I think. Um, I think we would need yes, to but... do our due diligence research on what this would mean. Um, and then, yes, you would need to connect with the select board about it. I would think we need to be very well prepared and hopefully yeah. not have a repeat of last time we yeah. made such suggestion. Um, and I mean, yes, I think ultimately it is their decision. I think the the committee makes recommendations to them and then it would have to go to town meeting floor. But it could then very well get away from us. So a byline would need to pass at town meeting? Okay. And in this case, I think we would also probably have to get the planning board involved because I think they would be the ones who would be enforcing it. Um, sorry, who was that again? The planning board. Okay. Courtney, would you be willing to research more about what a demolition delay bylaw is? Yeah, definitely. In the process for that? Great, thank you. Um, I believe the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is a potential resource for that. Okay, great. Great, thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, if we're ready to move on, the next thing on our agenda is the Code of Conduct Review and Adoption. So this was something that Jennifer James sent around last week that all boards, commissions, and committees are supposed to approve. Um, and then there was also a handbook as well that we're all supposed to read and then fill out the last page and submit to Jennifer. So did anybody else have a chance to read through this? I did not look at it. I didn't either. So we're supposed to individually sign it or we're supposed to sign it as a mention? Okay, so the code of conduct, I think what we're supposed to do right now is vote to approve it, say that we will follow it. And then the no. handbook, that's individually that we received it. Just received it? We don't have to read it? Um, well, <laughs> I did read it. Um, <laughs> there were. Some I started things. skimming it, but I haven't finished it. Um, <laughs> I forgot about it. I just came across it a little while ago. I hereby acknowledge receipt of the board committee or commission handbook of the town of Hadley. I understand. Oh, yep. I understand and agree that it is my responsibility to read and comply with the policies in the handbook. I understand that the handbook and all other written and oral materials provided to me are intended for information purposes only. I understand that the policies and guidelines are both in the handbook. And those communicated to me in any other fashion are subject to interpretation, review, removal, and may change based on local and state law. Mm. Yes, so you are supposed to read. All right, well, how would we like to go over the code of conduct? Because I think we need to vote on this and be done with it. Okay. Do you want me to share my screen? Sure.
Do you think I need to read this out loud or can you guys read it and then let me know when you're ready for the next page? I oh, think we can read it. Is there another page? Of course there is. Ready for page two? <laughs> yes, ready for page two. One second. Okay, I'm good. Fourth page is just the flex board signature, so we're in the home screen. You good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? Is this a brand new document or is it edited from? This is the document I received, I believe, Thursday last week from Jennifer. Oh, I just meant, um, is this like a new form that they that they just put together or is it like revised from something that they put together a couple years ago? Just curious. Um, I do not know. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. It says down here at the bottom that it was adopted um, July 19th this year. Okay. Um, this is also the first year I've ever received a handbook. <laughs> okay. And I think Maybe I new. <laughs> at the end of 2017. So, yeah, I, I think it's new. I bet it's revised, though. 
Yeah, the handbook I've seen, I think I got it last year when I started at the Russell School Committee, but um, okay. Do I have a motion to accept the code of conduct? So moved. I have a second. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Ms. Barstow Mann. Aye. Courtney Meyer. Aye. Judy Stone. Aye. And I, Diana West, also vote yes. Motion carries. Thank you guys. Thank you for your patience to go through that. And just a reminder to read the handbook and said that last page to Jennifer. All right, any other new business that didn't come before us when we posted this agenda? I just wanna let you know that I am gonna have a conflict with our meetings. Um, they have moved the Hampshire Association meeting, which I'm secretary of, to the third Tuesday. But it starts at six to 7.30 and a lot of times we're done in an hour. So I might just be coming in late. Just wanted to let you know. Um, I guess that is something we should talk about is do we want to meet in September or do we want to meet again in October? I, think I mean, is there, anything that, sure. is there anything that we would need to vote on it, uh, like before we go to print or anything? Do we have to like officially vote on finalizing anything or? Mm, that's a good point. So yeah, maybe we should meet in September. I mean, we can always decide not to if yeah. we don't have anything. I'm thinking it might be about. good to do September because then you'll go November and we won't have to worry about Christmas. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> point. Or really, any of the December holidays that we might run into. Um, we have been pushing off more till the fourth Tuesday. I'm actually will be out of town on the 19th, so the 26th would be better for me. I, yeah. I would not be able to attend on the 19th. I'll say. 26th is fine for me. Denise, do you have an opinion? No, nope, I'm adjusting my calendar right now to the okay. 26th. That actually works for me because my other meeting will be the third. <laughs> Which, you know, it is too bad because September 19th is National Talk Like Pirate Day. So we'll be missing out on that. <laughs> this opportunity. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, then thank you so much to Irene and Bree for joining us. Hopefully this has furthered your interest in the Historical Commission and you're not ready to run for the hilt. We don't always read like boring documents in silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's that was the first time that's ever happened. Part of this, the this day. This is the fun stuff. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Um, we appreciate you guys letting us come crash your meeting. Um, I one quick question: How many people are usually in the commission? Are there people that you guys are missing tonight, or? Yes. So um, we are missing Sherry Parsons, who is a commission member. So we have. Um, we're allowed to have seven people total. We currently have five, and um, there are four people who have submitted applications. This is the first time this has ever happened to us. We are really in this. I can I can leave if the other people want to. Um, <laughs> reading in the handbook, we are allowed to have associate and alternative alternate members. So, um, Judy, you can you and I can maybe have a conversation offline. Yeah. <laughs> about that if you'd like if you're willing to step down maybe into an associate role or alternate role or if you are ready to move on from the commission that's totally fine too um so the select board will have the final say on who is officially appointed um i really appreciate you guys coming and showing your interest tonight um and i hope that if the select board for whatever reason does not appoint you at this time then um next year if we have open slots or open slots really can happen at any time um you would still consider us awesome well thank you so much for having us mm, thank you thank you guys thank you welcome thanks all right have a good night everybody all right, all right. Good night. Bye. Bye.